Hello, welcome to this first series of videos. We are going to start our exercise by putting a point on the origin of our viewport. The next thing I'm going to do is reference this point into my grasshopper definition. So I'm going to add here a point parameter. And reference it. Okay, so what we're gonna start to do is trying to define the overall height and length of, of our bridge. So in order to do that, I'm gonna create a set of points that help me locate these dimensions on space. So we're gonna start with the overall height of our bridge. So I'm gonna call a move component to this place, this point. And I'm also going to add a C vector. And to specify the distance, I'm going to call a slider and I'm going to set that value of two. I think 20 would be a nice number. And I'm also gonna call this slider average height. And as you can see, now we have our point displacing on the C vector. So the next thing I'm going to do is trying to specify the overall length of my, of my bridge. So what I want to do is try to displace this point on the X axis and on both directions. So I'm going to call again another set of move components to do that. And the next vector, as that is the direction I want my points to be moving. And I'm going to create a, a slider to specify the average length of our bridge. I'm going to call it. Average length. I'm going to set this one up to, I think 50 would be okay. And as this value is going to be my total length, what I want is to divide it by two because I want half to go on the positive direction and the other half of the negative direction. So in order to do that, I'll have to add some uh, mathematical expressions to my vector to specify that this value should be divided by two. So I'm going to do that here in my expression tab. I'm going to type whatever value goes into it divided by two. And then for the other vector, I'm going to do more or less the same, but I'm also going to multiply it by minus one as I want this one to go on the negative direction. And then I can plug in my slider to my vectors. So now, as you can see, we have a couple of points displacing on the x-axis, specifying our overall length. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to start putting up the four geometries that will define our profile curves. In this case, it will be a couple of circles. We're going to specify the center of this by displacing again these two points. So once again, I'm going to call a couple of move components. I'm 
and this time I'm going to call again a C vector. And like in the previous cases, I'm going to add a slider. But this time I'm going to call this slider R1 or radius 1. as this value is also going to be referred for the radius of my circles. So I'm going to set that up to 60 perhaps. Before I place my circles, I'll create a couple of CX planes as I want them to be in a vertical position instead of the horizontal XY orientation they have by default. So I'm going to add those couple of planes now. Okay, so now with our planes in place, we can start creating our circles. So now we have a couple of circles referenced to these points. Next thing we're going to do is to create a tangent arc between these two circles. So I'm going to call a tangent arc component. And as you can see, this component is asking me for two base circles and a radius. So of course my circles are, are going to be these I've just created. And for my radius, I'm going to create another slider, which I'm going to call R2, which is going to be the second radius I'll be specifying. And I'm going to set that one up to 50. Let me organize all these a little bit. So these are the base curves we're going to be using to create our main profile curve for the bridge. On the next video, you'll learn how to extract the specific segments of these curves by using its parametric domains. So thanks for watching.